how to build a lab to hack safely. Or as I like to call it, <laughs> yes, master. Oh. Now we're going to go through and build a lab, guys. We're going to build this lab so that you get to play around. And the reason why I want you to play around is because of this. Practice builds knowledge. Knowledge builds confidence. I know this guy. His name's Super Dale. Oh. And uh, this has actually been a mantra that I've, I've followed for myself for my, my entire life, is that I've always noticed that when I have confidence, it's based off the fact that I've built up that with knowledge, and I get my knowledge from practicing. So before we build up this lab, you're going to raise your left hand and swear the following oath. We refer to these as the Superdale rules. And they go like this. The first thing is you promise you will not try out any of these tools on your network or, or my, yeah, it says my network, so don't come after me. No, we don't want you to do this on your production network, guys. And the reason why we say that is because some of these tools, as soon as you fire them up, you're going to set off a lot of alarms if you're not careful. Uh, those could be through your existing IDS systems or antivirus systems. Uh, and I just don't want you to do anything that could possibly jeopardize your environment. You're also going to make sure that you do not try out these tools against your competitor or anybody who's made you upset on Facebook this week. I know, you guys are like, Dale, you're taking away all the fun. <laughs> you also understand that the author, that would be me, <laughs> nor plural site, is responsible for what you do. Listen, if you guys take some of these tools and you go off and do things that are illegal, the last thing I want to hear is someone from the FBI calling me saying, hey, uh, Billy Bob here said that he learned all this stuff from you and you told him you could do it. No, that's not going to happen. You do not hold us responsible. It's time to put your big boy pants on, okay? I'm a firm believer in what we refer to as consequences. We all have the ability to make choices, and those choices result in either good consequences or bad consequences. And finally, you're going to hear me reference some superheroes as we go through several different courses, or any of my courses. I'm a huge superhero fan. And one of my favorite statements is the statement that Uncle Ben makes to Peter Parker as he dies. Anybody remember what he said? Yeah, he said, with great power comes great responsibility. Can I hack your system? Yep. Can I read your email? Yep. But that doesn't mean I'm going to do it. And in fact, one of my other favorite terms is integrity. And I defined it as what you do when people aren't watching you. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about our virtual lab. We've designed this course so that you can play around with these things. We're going to do this in a virtualized environment. And in order to set this up, you're going to have to come up with some type of virtualization technology. And that will be installed actually on a host machine. And then that host machine is going to have to have enough resources so that you can fire up up to five different machines. Now, they don't necessarily have to be on all at the same time. In some cases, we may only fire up two machines because we want just one to try a certain attack on another. And other times, you might fire up you know, three or, three or four machines just so you can see if you can do a, a flood of some sort. As far as the virtualization is concerned, you can use whatever virtualization technology is comfortable to you. If you're not comfortable with any of these that I'm about to show you, don't worry. I'm going to walk you through the virtualization technology that I enjoy, which is called Hyper-V. I'll take you through step by step. I'll show you how you can install this. It's not going to cost you anything. We can use evaluation stuff here, guys. So yes, you can use Hyper-V, which is something that comes on all the server platform products by Microsoft, as well as uh, they just included it, by the way, in Windows 8.1 Enterprise Edition, which is kind of cool. You can also use VMware, and you could even use something very, very basic like VirtualBox. Now, VirtualBox, I believe, is still free. VMware also has a free product out there. Hyper-V has its own free product, but it's kind of an interesting SKU. One of their SKUs is just called Hyper-V Server, and that is actually free, but if you fire that bad boy up, you're going to get a DOS prompt. And unless you know how to manage a server from a DOS prompt, you're in trouble because there's no GUI. But again, I'm going to show you what we're going to do is we're going to go install an operating system. And with Microsoft platform, you can install and run a 180-day eval of a particular OS. And then I'm going to show you a nifty little command that we can type in that would allow me to renew that evaluation for up to three times. So 180 times three 
Yeah, that's that's quite a bit. So first of all, let's talk about that host machine as far as the requirements are concerned. The first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you have an OS in for the Hyper-V environment. I'm going to be either running Windows 8.1 Enterprise or Server 2012 R2. This host machine should also have at least 16 gigs of RAM. Now, you might be able to get away with 12 gigs, maybe 8, but you're not going to be able to fire up as many machines at a single time. So 16, 32 would actually be better. You'll also need to make sure that you have at least a 50 gig hard drive. Now, the hard drive I'm going to be using is a solid state drive, which means my virtual machines will probably be a little snappier than if, I, if you were to use a standard hard drive. Now, when I say you need at least a 50 gig hard drive, I mean free space, 50 gigs of free space in order to run these virtual machines. And you'll also want obviously want to have a network interface card on this host machine. Now, this network interface card will be connected up to your possibly your production environment or it may be hooked up directly to the Internet, and that's OK. Now, this. This host machine should be able to talk to the internet because you're going to do some research on it. We talk about vulnerability research. You need to be able to just get out on the internet quickly and, and see what's out there. But the virtual machines themselves, they do not need internet access. So as far as the virtual machines are concerned, we're going to fire up a couple of them. We're going to, after we bring up our host machine, we're going to fire up a Windows 8.1 box. Then we'll go through and install Windows 7. And we'll also fire up a couple of servers, both server 08 R2 and server 2012. And it could be 2012 R2, or it could be Windows Server 08. It doesn't necessarily have to be the R2. I just know a lot of times people like to see what's the latest and greatest as far as vulnerabilities are concerned. But it needs to, the reason why we fire up all these different machines is because I want it to be representing the network that you currently have deployed. Some of you guys may not have come to, over to Windows 8.1. Resistance is futile. Uh, you may be stuck on Windows 7, and that's great. Great operating system. But you also may want to, again, check around, and maybe you've got a couple of people that, it is, that are using Windows 8.1. Then we're going to fire up a, another virtual machine. It's kind of an interesting one. This is going to be a Linux distro that is going to include something that used to be called Backtrack, but is now called Kali. Uh, Kali is a, or Backtrack, is a pen testing product that we will use to test for certain vulnerabilities, and we'll want to have that as a separate virtual machine. Now, as far as the virtual machines are concerned, we actually have to configure their virtual environment. And what we'll do is we're going to go through and we'll configure each machine with a certain amount of memory and a certain, many, a certain amount of CPUs. But the one thing we want to do is make sure that the virtual machines are on their own separate network, almost like a VLAN, but not quite. The network itself only exists in the virtual world, and the virtual machines can talk to each other because we may throw some attacks one at a time at the different machines, but they're not allowed to communicate with the host machine. And this will help to keep the integrity of the host machine because, again, it has access to the Internet or possibly even to your network. So the first step is actually getting your download on. <laughs> what I mean by this is you need to go and get the operating systems, and we're going to start downloading those. And you're going to download them, and you can either save them as an ISO, or if you like, if you're one of those guys that has to have the physical DVD, you can burn it out to a DVD. But we'll be installing. Hyper-V allows me to mount up an ISO as if it's a virtual CD or DVD drive. And by the way, if I say CD in the future here, hopefully you guys know that I mean the DVD, CD drive, or whatever it is. It's just a matter of storage, right? Um, you could also actually install this from a thumb drive if you want to shoot these out to a thumb drive as well. So if you don't have these operating systems, that's okay. I'll show you how to grab those. If you do, or if your company currently has a TechNet or MSDN or even a volume license subscription with Microsoft, you can go off and get those downloads, maybe even talk with your IT guy, unless you're the IT guy then talk to yourself. Anyway, get those ISOs. One thing that you can do, especially if you don't have one of these subscriptions, is you can use some of the trials or the eval copies of these operating systems. Now, I'm going to give you kind of a heads up here. The trial and evaluation copies, Microsoft is not real excited about keeping older operating systems up or available for evaluation because they're always trying to push people to the newer stuff. So as an example, if you go to the evaluation site for Microsoft, you're not going to see Windows 7 available for download because they're trying to obviously have people evaluate Windows 
But Dale, how am I going to get a hold of Windows 7? Well, I have some links here for you, and I've shortened up the links that allow you to go off and grab a copy of Windows 7. comes in about, uh, I think it's like five or six, eh, maybe seven, different files that you'll download. You'll then launch the first file, which will uncompress them. Uh, this particular version of Windows 7, though, was actually built off of Virtual PC, which was something that came with Vista back in the old days. It was so that you could play around with newer operating systems. So we'll have to take a little extra care in setting that particular product up. We have to remove the components for Virtual PC out of it, and then it comes right into Hyper-V with no problems. But don't worry, I'll show you how to do that. As far as getting a hold of Kali, we're just simply going to go to the website, www.kali.org, and they have a link there for downloading Kali, and you'll see it come in either a full mini or VMware edition. The VMware edition is exactly what it sounds like. It's an edition that you can download a file, you can download it and mount it immediately inside of VMware. Apparently, there's no love for Microsoft there. There's also the mini edition, which you can install on a bootable device, like a thumb drive. And then they have a full edition. I'll be grabbing the full edition and running it from the ISO in the virtual machine. Now, in order to get the trial editions, easiest place to go to get those bad boys is going to be on the TechNet Evaluation Center. And again, I'll take you through as we walk you through how to install each one. I'll show you how to go out and find the file, download it, set it up inside of Hyper-V. We'll all actually start off with setting up the host machine, but I'll take you through step by step. Don't worry, I've got your back. Now, for those of you guys that are a little bit more advanced, and if you guys are familiar with the Microsoft VHD program, you could also use those files. These are basically Hyper-V machines that have been pre-created. All you have to do is mount them inside of Hyper-V, fire them up. You don't even have to go through a full installation. I will be installing Server 2012 R2 and Windows 8.1 via the VHD program, just because it makes it easy and I don't have to go through a full installation. Okay, so we're gonna go through in this demo, I'll take you through step by step. We'll start with the host machine. After we get the host machine configured for Hyper-V, we'll then go through and show you how to get your source OS's. We'll then go through and show you how to configure, because it'll take a while to download, but while they're downloading, we'll configure the virtual network on the host machine. We'll then install the clients. And then we got to go back, and on some of the clients, we're going to configure them to do certain things. For example, we're going to install DNS on one of our servers. We'll then go through and set up the IP addresses on the virtual machines so that when we talk about via IP, a lot of times we don't know the name of the computer. We're just doing it by IP. If we set them up identical, if you guys follow me along, then when I say I'm going to hit this particular IP, you can be right there with me. And, of course, we'll also have some additional network settings that we'll have to configure. So let's get going. 